Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. So today, my guest went from being an ER nurse to having over half a billion views on the site we affectionately call Cornhub in just a few years. And it all started when she and her husband wanted to spice things up in the bedroom. Now she's a full-fledged hot wife, a top five amateur creator, and a Vixen contract star. Welcome, Serenity Cox. Hey, thanks, Holly. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. So, Serenity, you started off as a nurse in the ER. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that because, I mean, the emergency room is an intense place. You must have seen a lot of things. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Um, so I've been a nurse for 16 years. Um, pretty much all of that was spent in the emergency department. Um, I'm from Toronto. I work in a trauma center. see a lot. <laughs> wow. I say I work. I just recently left the profession. Right. Okay. Um, so just this year. So. Okay. I know a lot of nurses who have transitioned over to adult, and I feel like there's an element of like nurturing and taking care of someone in both professions, I think. Yeah. You know what? I've never thought of it. Yeah. That. I think there's a <laughs> little bit of crossover way. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I have noticed uh, since I delved into this other industry yeah. um, that there's a lot of healthcare professionals or former healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. And then the funny thing is, is that the job that most people go into, if they're able to get a job after leaving adult, is they become a realtor. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> Maybe that's my next step. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, you know, it's a full life cycle. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about working at a trauma center in an ER. Like what's some of the your horrible stories. We I, I, love horrible stories. Oh, I know. I, I feel like I shouldn't, though. I feel like I should keep the, the horrible stories to myself. Um, but they're, yeah, it's busy. It's, there's not enough people to to handle it all. Um, it's just, just always going so much adrenal, adrenaline. But the best thing about it is that you work as a team. Mm -hmm. I had this core team that I worked with. They're amazing people. Um, it's kind of the thing that brings you back every day is like mm -hmm. this team of people that you're like in it together, uh, getting it done. And uh, that's kind of, the, that's that's the part that I miss about it. Not the, hor not the horrible things that we saw, but yeah. like these people, like it's a good group of people. Did you find that you would get kind of like, I don't want to say jaded, but you had to acclimate to some of the things that you saw, right? Like, was there any dissociation? Because that's got to be really yeah, hard it's emotional. A fine, it's a fine balance. There's always this sort of, like, you still want to have compassion, but you don't want to be completely destroyed emotionally. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of walk that fine line where you're, you care, but you don't get, you know, so invested that you can't function in mm -hmm. the moment. So, yeah. Yeah. I was in the ER, unfortunately, a few months ago with my mother, actually. Um, and while we were there... There was some guy who I think like had an enlarged bladder or something and he was like one curtain over and he was just like crying for pain medication for like the whole time we were there. It was really like horrific. And, you know, they would be like, it's coming, it's coming as fast as we can. And then they just put him in a corner and then he's just like, anybody help me. And I swear that like haunts me still. And I know that the nurses aren't not compassionate people, but it made it really like made me think about how hard it is to try to handle all of those people and everybody's got an emergency. My sister's an ICU nurse, as I mentioned to you. So yeah. like, you know, I've kind of talked to her about it. You just like have to kind of like suck it up and do your job. Yeah. And it's so true. It's like the the prioritizing who's in the most dire need of help at that very moment. Mm -hmm. And even though somebody else might be in a ton of pain, somebody else might be dying. And it's like, you you don't want to leave that person waiting, but you kind of have to until something else is dealt with. So it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's, there's a lot of that, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So how did you go from working as a nurse into the adult industry? You started exploring like new sexual um, adventures with your husband. Is that right? Yeah. So um, so my husband and I, we've been married for eight years. Um, started off as like a monogamous couple, just the two of us. Um, we've always had a really fun sex life. Uh, but in the last, I think it was about four years ago now, um, we decided to kind of go down a new path. And that's the, uh, the, the hot wife, as they call it, path. Um, over the years that we've known each other, our, um, I guess, sort of bedroom um, role play always kind of came back to these themes that were like hot wife themes. Mm -hmm. um, and so we would role play it. And it was something that developed kind of slowly over the years. But we never actually 
went out and and actively participated um, in involving other people in our our relationship okay. for years and years. But it was always like that was like our fun role play, and that's what would really get us both going. There was a lot of factors that kind of like made us decide let's just do this. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of it was like <sighs> there was the pandemic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the pandemic changed a lot of people's um, dynamics in their relationships. Yeah. Um, it also you know, people were bored, people were at home, people were experimenting with new things. Um, it was also the, even just my workplace, like I needed an outlet, something <laughs> outside of this crazy, you know, COVID pandemic emergency, all this stress and unknown and fear. Um, and then come home and and some people had outlets that were, you know, hobbies or sports or activity or yoga. Baking bread. Baking bread. A lot of bread. people were baking bread yeah, during COVID. I, I said, screw it to the bread. Let's mm-hmm. have a better sex life. Let's do crazy kinky things. Um, so that was sort of our at-home outlet. I remember specifically, I had um, some girlfriends who were who were dating and they were telling me about how much better dating during the pandemic was because when you meet somebody online, there's no pressure to meet them in person and you get to kind of have these conversations yeah. in text without getting together because everybody was scared of being in person with mm-hmm. people. And I used that. That stuck with me. And my husband and I decided, why don't I make like a Tinder account and I can start flirting with guys and nobody's going to expect me. I can be like, oh, pandemic, sorry, I can't come over. Yeah. We're just going to flirt a bit. Yeah. And that was the first step into sort of evolving our sex life into not just role play, but involving, I guess, other other forms, like actual people, mm-hmm. but from a safe distance, just over the phone. Like I would be, you know, sexting or mm-hmm. or something. And then my husband and I would have this like amazing sex afterwards. So that was sort of the first step into it. It was a safe way to involve other people without involving other people, yeah. you know? And I, I won't mention which girlfriend it was, but she doesn't realize that she was the one who <laughs> inspired me to start doing that. And after that, I started, you know, talking to more and more guys and more guys. And eventually we were like, this is so exciting. And, and my husband was like, I am okay if you want to meet up with one of these people that you've been talking to for a bit. And so I did. And that was like 2020, I think. Um, and after that, we were officially a hot wife couple. And I would go out and, and see other men. and. Uh, come back home and my husband and I would just have a great time together. Wow. So for those people that don't know exactly what hot wifing is, could you explain it? Right. So um, a hot wife is a, I just find it a funny term as well. Like I don't know who invented that, but anyway, a hot wife is uh, usually female uh, partner of a married couple um, who is encouraged uh, and supported by her husband to go out and have sexual relations with other people, men and women. Mm -hmm. enhances their relationship together. Some people confuse it with a cuckold relationship, um, which involves a lot more sort of humiliation or degradation towards the husband. But in our relationship, we don't do that. He's equal to me and we all kind of have fun and enjoy it. The first time I'd really like delved into the world of hot wifing was, of course, when I had Holly hot wife on, who I'm sure you know. And then she explained to me that her husband is called the stag, right? And so then he, the, the woman comes home and the stag kind of like reclaims her, right? And he gets excited about the idea of you being with somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that kind of leads to how we started creating content because mm-hmm. a big part of what I would do when I would go out on a date with another uh, man, um, at first I would just come home and I would describe it all to my husband mm-hmm. and he loved it. And that would, you know, lead mm-hmm. to our, um, intimate <laughs> yeah. times. Uh, but then I started doing, um, recording it. Mm-hmm. So I would send him like videos and photos. Um, so I'm assuming the guys you knew, you went out with knew about this, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah. they I, knew you had a husband at home and oh, the, yeah. He, yeah, everything's laid out. Yeah. Everything's very clear from the beginning. I'm not trying to trick anybody mm-hmm. or give anybody the wrong idea. So I would tell them, this is my relationship that I have. Are you comfortable with it? Mm-hmm. And obviously as well with, with video, you know, is it okay if I send some clips to my husband, you know, we'll keep your face out of it. Let's just, mm-hmm. I just want to show them the good time that we're having. And most, I mean, most guys that I went out with were completely fine I was going to say, I'm sure you didn't have a lot of people <laughs> there, that said no. <laughs> no, yeah. There wasn't a lot of problems with that, especially because at that time it was just to send to my husband. Right. Um, so that just became our, our dynamic. Be like, mm-hmm. I'd go out, take these filthy videos, uh, mm-hmm. exciting videos, and then bring them home to my husband. Um, and then just over time, it sort of evolved. Um, we, uh, 
met some friends who were comfortable with my husband being involved and actually being present. Uh, and that was the next level of it. And the way he enjoyed being present would be to be the videographer. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. So you're not um, just sitting there. You're like actively involved, but in a different kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And again, this was like, it was such a slow process, but like, it was like every, every new experience, there was like a little bit more and a little bit more, uh, and a little bit more exciting. Um, so he would come and he would video and he'd get involved as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but we would make these videos and they were just for us, Mm -hmm. um, at that time, uh, until we discovered um, the first platform we discovered was FetLife, and mm. we made we made some profiles on there. And it was like I wore a mask, my face was covered, and we put these like photos and videos, and it was exciting mm-hmm. um, because it wasn't just for us. Like that part was more my husband's fantasy and like his kink. And I mean, it was really exciting for me because I got to experience all these other men and like try new things. Um, but I was really liking the exhibitionist side of it, like people watching me, whether it be my husband or just people like the the men that I was meeting. So we started posting on this on this silly website and started getting a lot of feedback uh, and a lot of followers and that just kind of like drove the the fire to like keep on going and mm-hmm. keep on making content and um and make more interesting content and better clear better quality. So that kind of drove us and we gained a, a following on on FetLife. And and then one day we were like wouldn't it be – it was almost as a joke. Like, wouldn't it be funny to just put one of our videos up on – on Pornhub. Pornhub. We're at 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. So you okay. can say Pornhub now. <laughs> um, so we're like, let's let's just put a video up like as like a, a naughty little like secret thing. We'll put it on Pornhub and just see what happens. Um, and so we did. And it became really popular. Mm. I think it it was just like the, the right time, the right genre um, – like again, it was still like this is only a year into us actually having these experiences. Mm-hmm. So it was still kind of like deep in the pandemic and people were interested in different things and, yeah. we and were watching online a lot, a lot more. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was just like a like right time, right place. Um, our video got really popular. Um, so we started putting more on. Um and it just took off. Um, we started a channel. Like I didn't even have the name Serenity Cox. We were called Hot Wife Adventures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was it was just like a, ch- a channel name. Um, and then as it became more popular, um, we're like, oh shoot, we have to I have to be a person, and we yeah. made like an actual decision. Like, okay, this isn't us just screwing around and putting it online. Like we're ma- actually making a, a almost like a business, or a, it was still yeah. a hobby at that time. But but you're getting um, paid for it. But we started getting paid for it. Yeah, yeah, which I didn't I didn't realize that when we first put it up. Until oh, really? I started like playing around the site and there was like the uh, the part that tells you what you're getting paid. And I remember, like, I forget what it was. It was like a couple hundred bucks or something. I remember looking at my husband and being like, we're making money from this. Like, <laughs> we're making money. Uh, like as little as it was at first, it was just, it was really exciting. I'm like, yeah. I didn't realize it. He, yeah. he knew because he, he knew. He was like, yeah, we're making money. <laughs> like, who are you? Like I knew nothing about the the adult industry. I knew nothing about like amateur content creation, like nothing. We were just like having a good time mm-hmm. and it, being genuinely excited for ourselves by the feedback we were getting from people who are watching it. I mean, those are like the right reasons to get into the adult industry, <laughs> well, like, right? It's yeah. Like, it's, for, it's so interesting because for you, it's kind of opposite. Like a lot of people get into the porn industry for money and then maybe they find that they like enjoy it or maybe they learn to enjoy it or maybe they enjoyed it at the time. But like you went opposite. You're like, you got into it because you enjoyed it. And then you're like, oh, oh, there's money? What? You know what I found out before I found out about, out about the money was they had um, the Pornhub model rewards program where you get free swag when you get so many subscribers. <laughs> That's what drove my interest. You wanted that first. Pornhub jacket? I was like, I want the porn that I will never wear in public anywhere because nobody at that time knew what I was doing. Yeah. I was like, I just want the swag, the branded swag. And that's what that's what drove it. And I and I, you know, hit those milestones quicker than I expected. And I was so excited about like my water bottle and my hat. <laughs> <laughs> like the, I'm like, yeah, okay, a couple hundred bucks is fine, but like the the swag is where we're yeah, at. We love we love that Pornhub swag. Yeah. Um anyway, that's what drove it at first. And then obviously uh, afterwards it became a business. So when you started your channel on Pornhub, were you still hiding your face or were you showing it? Um that lasted a few months. Okay. I wasn't telling like nobody in my in my social circle knew what we were doing, like mm-hmm. family and friends work. Nobody knew at first. Um, because there really wasn't a need to tell anybody. It was just our our, you know, we had never been the type of people that really even talked about our sex life with our our friends. So 
<laughs> which is why down the road, it was a bigger surprise when people did find out. Um, we we blocked our, our geographical area. Yeah. Um, I know there's ways around it, which I found out later. Yeah. Um, but it made us feel more comfortable. So we blocked um, like the province of Ontario where we live. Mm -hmm. And and then I started showing my face. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. So when your videos started going viral, um, did you have like a moment of panic when you're like, oh my God, so many more people are seeing this than I expected. And you started to realize that people in your life might recognize you? A little bit. Yeah. Um, there was a moment of panic, but there was more excitement than there was panic. The excitement of how many people were enjoying it outweighed mm. the the panic about people finding out. Um, and we ended up getting like the the one thing I really liked about about these platforms where people can interact and and comment as much as you know there's always the the troll comments. There was a lot of like really nice, really genuine comments, um, and I found people were on average, really nice and supportive and encouraging. Um, and as much as it was like the, the excite, the, the like sexual excitement of, of feedback from people, it was also this kind of heartwarming, um, just hearing people say like, Hey, this is the kind of relationship that I have with my spouse as well. And like seeing content out here that people are doing what we're doing, you know, makes us feel like this is more normal. And a lot of, and comments from women as well, um, saying like, seeing, you know, a girl out there looking like she's genuinely enjoying what she's doing. Um, you know, those kind of comments, you know, yeah. that really make you feel good about what you're doing. And so I kind of, instead of looking at it just from, you know, this is for us, me and my husband and our, and our enjoyment and our, and our friends that we are, are filming it with, it was also, I was like, this is a platform where I can represent, you know, a sexual woman enjoying herself. And this is a platform where I can represent a couple who, you know, an alternative style of, of couple who are happy and it works for them. And, mm -hmm. and so I thought this is kind of an interesting way to just kind of put out, you know, alternative relationship dynamics and like, you know, female positivity and sex. And, and, and I started having those kind of thoughts as well. And I was like, this is a good thing. Yeah. So obviously this works for you. There's always people who can't wrap their head around the idea of like a non-monogamous relationship. So how do you guys manage that? Like, do you have boundaries? Is there a lot of communication going on? Yeah. In the very beginning, it was a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, I am very secure in my relationship with my husband. Like we're, we're we have a really good relationship. Um, we weren't always the most communicative people, but it was really fun to kind of learn how to communicate. Mm. Um, my husband's very, um, who doesn't hate that I'm saying this very stereotypical British guy doesn't like have his, you know, feelings exposed and out there. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was really nice to like, like he had to, like he was forced to have to tell me how he was feeling about things, um, and not hold it inside because otherwise it's not going to work. So if, if I, I did something that he was uncomfortable with or that made him feel a certain way, he had to tell me. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we learned a lot about ourselves as a couple. Um, we, you know, we made some rules about, um, cause it's, it's, it's different when we're not both exploring. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas I'm going out with guys and he's not going out with, with other women. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting set of rules that we have to have because I have to make sure that he feels okay. I'm not crossing any boundaries with guys. Um, so we, we definitely had a lot of conversations in the beginning. I mean, we didn't even know, you know, you don't always know what's going to be okay or what's not going to be okay until you kind of cross that line. And then you're right. like, that wasn't good. Like, well, now we know. Now we know. We'll, that on we'll do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Does he ever go out and experiment with other girls without you or? Um, not without me. We've been okay. in group situations before where, you know, all together, like mm -hmm. he'll play with the other girls in the, in the group mm -hmm. situation. Um, but not, uh, not in the same way that I do. Like I'll go out on a, on a date with a guy just privately. Like mm -hmm. he won't go out with a girl that okay. way. Not because we have rules against it more just because this, our enjoyment is me coming home from my date and that right. kind of works for us. Use that way. That makes yeah. sense. So does your husband show his face on camera at all or is he? No, no, he's okay. uh, for the most, for most of our, our videos, he's, he's behind the camera. So it's okay. His POV. Basically. Right. Okay. Um, but he also doesn't want to have his face on, on camera. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, as long as we have his penis, right? As long as, as, long as his penis. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back. We're going to talk about how Serenity got into 
doing studio work um, and how she got signed to Vixen. So stick around. We'll be right back. Are you tired of feeling like you're not living up to your full potential in the bedroom? Do you want to fuck like a porn star with confidence and stamina? Look no further than Blue Chew. These powerful tablets are designed to give you stronger erections and help you last longer so you can satisfy your partner and yourself like a pro. Imagine being able to go all night without any worries or disappointments. That's what Blue Chew can do for you. The best part? It's all done online, so you can avoid those awkward doctor visits and pharmacy lines. You'll speak with a licensed medical professional who can determine if Blue Chew is right for you. You can take Blue Chew anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. And don't worry, Blue Chew is made in the USA and shipped directly to your door, so you can trust the quality and convenience. No more excuses, no more disappointments. With Blue Chew, you can unlock your full sexual potential and become the porn star you've always wanted to be. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code HOLLY at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code HOLLY to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the podcast. All right, guys, thank you so much and welcome back. So Serenity, so you obviously are experiencing a lot of success on the Pornhub platform. How did that transition into shooting for studios? Um, So last year, um, one of the casting people from Vixen reached out to me through Twitter um, and told me about a new channel that they were introducing called Milfy. Mm-hmm. Um, it was early in 2023. and. At that time, I was a little bit unsure. I didn't. I didn't say yes right away. Were you still working as a nurse at this time? Yeah. Okay. Rewind to the nursing thing. It, it had all come out at work, and it, was it fine. did. It was fine by that point. Yeah. I mean, I definitely <laughs> want to hear that. So maybe um, we jump into that before we start talking about moving to the studios. Like, sure. How did everybody? Yeah. I mean, how did how did everyone at work find out? How did that come out? Why did you decide to leave? Um, and the leaving didn't have anything to do with it coming out. It was okay. actually, people were really good about it. Um, so, you know, me thinking I'm super smart and blocking Ontario from viewing my Pornhub, mm-hmm. obviously people have VPNs and things to get around it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not foolproof. Um, somebody had seen, like, it, it was getting really popular and a lot of views. It was hard to to keep people from seeing it. Yeah. So somebody at work found it, shared it, um, it word got around and originally it was our union rep who came to me <laughs> and was like, so, you know, there's, you know, some, some word of some things that are out there on the internet. Um, and she was concerned for me that it was not okay to work my job while this stuff was out there. And that, you know, her initial reaction was take it down. Um, and then I questioned that, like, I think she was genuinely concerned for me. Um, I questioned it. I was like, are you telling me that because it's your opinion that I need to take it down? Or is it because there's actually a rule that says you can't be doing adult content and working this job? Mm. Um, She wasn't entirely sure. So she like sent me to the next, like the higher up person in her boss. Oh my God. Who also was like, I think you need to take it down. But I'm like, I don't want these, I think you need to answers, right? I, I need like concrete, you know, mm-hmm. if if there's a conflict with my workplace, I need to to know about it um, or work around it somehow. But I, I'm not just going to take somebody's gut feeling, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or, you know, their concern. Um, so she put me in touch with the legal department. Um, oh <laughs> like there's just, and like at, at the time, like I'm, I'm thinking about it and I'm like, I don't use my real name. I don't do anything that has to do with my workplace. I don't do, um, you know, nurse cosplay porn. Uh, like what I'm doing is legal. There was nothing. So I'm like, what? And I was, I started reading through all like the fine print. And when I, you know, first signed on to my job being like, is there something in like the the terms and conditions? And like, I'm racking my brain being like, am I doing something? I didn't realize I was doing something wrong. So I had a, a bit of panic at first. Um, and then my meeting with the the lawyer from like the, I don't like college of nurses legal team. Um, she called me and I told her what the issue was. And she was like, 
I wish I wish I could remember what her name was because she was so great. And I could just hear the excitement in her voice because she's so used to having these like, you know, medical practice issue, legal issues at the hospital. And she'd never been asked about adult content mm-hmm. and if it was a conflict. And she was so excited to do research me to find out if there was any issues yeah. with that because she was like, this is way more interesting than the stuff that people usually use me for right. in the hospital. Yeah. So she w- she went off to call me the next day and she's like, I can't find any reason why you can't. She's like, what you're doing is legal. And like the things that I listed, you know, I'm not in any way involving my, the hospital or my job. So she gave me that answer. I was like, yes, I'm going to keep doing it. I went and talked to my manager um, at work. I was like, this is what I'm doing. Some people at work know about it. Um, and my manager was amazing. She was just like, honestly, she's like, you do you. What you do in your personal time is is your business. She's like, just come to me if anybody at work treats you any differently because of it. And that's not okay. So she's like, I've got your back. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a good employee. And, you know, this is my personal life versus my work life. It doesn't have anything to do with it. So that's an amazing <laughs> reaction because I know, so I don't know if you heard about this, but there was a case in Oregon and I can never remember her last name, but she was, uh, her name was Nicole and she was in the adult industry for like a year, decided it wasn't for her, left and went and got a real job as so many people, you know, yell at sex workers to do. Um, and she was going to school for nursing and she got kicked out of school because they found that she had done porn in her past. She wasn't doing it anymore. Just in her past. Right? Just yeah. in her past. And they like pushed her out of the school and she ended up suing the school and she won, nice. which was really kind of amazing. And it's just so interesting to me that, you know, these people were coming to you and saying, well, you should probably take it down, but they, they didn't think about it. Right. They didn't think it through. They just thought, uh, sex work and like, it was like a panic reaction. Yeah, exactly. Like sex work and healthcare. Like you can't do these two things, even though they're completely separate. Um, without actually looking at the fine print or like, is this an illegal thing? And, and you know, why should it be illegal, right? Like there's no actual real reasons besides your own bias. And um, so it's interesting that you had to go through all those levels. And I love that you challenged them. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know why I'm saying these things, I guess. Maybe you should talk to somebody else who would know why. So yeah. that's really interesting to me. And I'm glad that you had that experience. I am too. Like it made me feel so much better about yeah. I mean, it. Not that I felt I, like I never felt any, any shame or any, any, I never felt bad about what I did, but I was very aware that people have misconceptions and have a lot of biases ab- about it. I know that there's, you know, the, the history of the industry isn't always, you know, has not always been in a good light. Um, but I was just really happy that like that's how it how it turned out. And that was kind of the trigger that, you know, we got rid of the 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 geo block on on Pornhub. Mm-hmm. Um because like and you know, I have all these discussions with my husband when these things happen. And we're like, us hiding it kind of gives into that 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 idea that it's wrong or that yeah. it's bad or that it's, you know, you're feeding into that stigma, it. right? So why why should we be trying to to hide this from people? So that was the the trigger to kind of open up more with, we didn't tell everybody right away, but it was like a slow process. Um, but that was sort of or like the more we, we lean, lean into being like, yeah, this is what I do and it's okay. And it's healthy. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing and it can be a good thing. Then, you know, people have less fuel to be like, shame yeah. on you. <laughs> yeah. When they see that, like you're embracing it and yeah. you guys have a healthy relationship, um, it's hard, it's harder, right? Yeah. So like if I had, if I had been like, oh no, I'm going to take it down. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Like then that's. Yeah. You're just. Perpetuating that narrative. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then how did your family react? Um, that one was a little bit, a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Um, everybody's, everybody's good now, <laughs> but <laughs> the initial, uh, because again, they didn't find out from me. They found out through other sources. Um, and when. Anytime I, I I talk to somebody and I and I tell them what we're doing, it's always received a lot better because they're hearing my side of what it is. Right. But when when somebody who doesn't expect that from me finds it on the internet or through through somebody else, they create you know especially somebody in like say my parents' generation, um, they create a story of what exactly that is that's happening. That's not necessarily the the real story. Did people automatically as- assume blame to your husband, like he was pushing you into it? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm what I'm 
Yeah, because you're a woman and so you're yeah. the victim automatically, Which right? Which me uh, so much. Oh, it's like my pet peeve. Yeah, because obviously I'm a woman. I can't decide to be, to be, you know, I can't decide to be a, a sexual being, right? Like right. it must be my husband who's forcing me to do these right. things with other men or like right. film it, you know? Yeah. There's, there, was a, there was a lot of that um, yeah. and I had to challenge a lot of those, um, those opinions on what we did. Yeah, what we do. that's definitely like my my biggest issue with the whole like porn is degrading to women because you never hear the narrative like porn is degrading to men, right? It's always yeah. women because we're the victims. Yeah. We're like the weaker sex. We don't actually like sex. We're not exhibitionists really. Yeah. We're just like pushed into it by perverted men yeah. because we have like no agency over our bodies and we can't make decisions on our own. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. so sad that it's still such a strong um, – strong opinion that's, yeah. that's still out there. But I think women like you um, and coming out and talking about this kind of thing, I think is starting to change people's opinion, you know? I hope so. But it's important that you that you do say these things and you do like really emphasize like, this is me, this is what I want to do. Um, because yeah, it's, it's yeah, I, I that's exactly what I thought probably happened. And I, like I even my my poor mother i had some we like we've always been really close um but we never had you know conversations about we weren't the kind of mother and daughter that talked about like sex mm -hmm. and that sort of side of our lives mm -hmm. so um so i was forced to have like the the most like i i laid it all out for her my my poor mortified mother but it was so healthy because after that she was like i get it mm -hmm. like i understand and we've had some some really interesting conversations and some really healthy and progressive conversations in the last couple of years since then. Um, and I'm actually really proud of my mom for like some of the, you know, I think she's come a long way, like in her yeah. interviews and her understanding and like her acceptance of a lot of a lot of stuff um, that, you know, a few years ago or more, we never would have had those conversations and she may not have had those those thoughts. So, yeah. Would you say that she's proud of you now? She has said it cautiously. <laughs> There's always like a with a but. She's like, I'm she's proud that like, you know, about me, you know, being like positive and 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 you know, doing something different or you know, not the norm. Um she's like, you know, it always has to be like, it's not something I would do, but mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> I'm proud that this is making you happy and that you're doing this. Yeah. But yeah, it's always with the the kind of the cautious like you know, I'd be proud if it was something else too. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> no, I get that. I get that. So do you think that you would ever go back to a more traditional career path or do you think this is like your future? I think I will. I don't think I'm out of the nursing game for life. What made you decide to leave? Was it just like the, this was becoming, like there was just more and more opportunity in this field and you thought, yeah, I really want to follow this? I held onto them both and I balanced it pretty well for a while. But Things were getting more and more successful in the adult industry for for me um, financially. I don't like to make it a financial thing, but like, I mean, I was I was working these this shift work and these twelve hour shifts and saying no to opportunities that would have like made me a lot more a money. lot more money. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. We all know nursing. nurses don't make that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so it was a lot of things. It was it was getting a little bit tough to balance. Um, there was in the beginning of 2024, there was a lot of opportunities that to, that came forward that I didn't want to feel held back. So I said, you know what, I'm taking a year off from nursing. I'm just going to say, you know, yes to all of the things that come my way. Um, see where we can take this. Um, career, this lifestyle, uh, and then reassess in 2025. Um, I don't think I will ever go back to full-time shift work mm -hmm. again ever in my life, but I will go back to healthcare in some way. Do you think that you'll have difficulty re-entering the healthcare career market or do you think that it'll be, it'll be easy to get hired back? Oh yeah. I don't think I'll have difficulty getting back into it. They're so desperate for nurses. Like <laughs> Nobody's going to say no. <laughs> I mean, that that's great to hear because I, and maybe it's a Canadian thing because I know in America, it's like, it's been a problem for people. Yeah. So there was, I don't know if you've ever heard, listened to the podcast, um, The Butterfly Effect by John Ronson. It's actually, it's, I wouldn't even call it a podcast. It's a long special couple hours, I think. Maybe it is a podcast. I don't know. Anyways. Okay. Um, and it's it's actually about Pornhub specifically mm. and all of these like little 
things that kind of sp- spiraled off from things on Pornhub and um, an adult in general. And there was one male performer who was in porn, did it for a while, and then got into nursing and then got fired from his job because somebody recognized him as a performer, like at the hospital. Mm. And they, yeah. And I think that their excuse was something like, we can't be liable if somebody decides to like accuse you of like sexual assault or something, which is like crazy, right? Because isn't this that, that assumption that if you work in the adult industry, you must be like a sexual deviant in some yeah. way. And like you would sexually like yeah that's pay, horrible. like it's just crazy right um so when i hear stories like that it's just like infuriating so i love hearing that you know you've had a much different experience yeah i think i've my i mean i've been very lucky in all of the aspects of my of my career path yeah. so far i know it's not everybody's story but i've been very fortunate yeah um, maybe canadians are just better than americans <laughs> maybe that's that's know. that's what know. it is Better country. <laughs> um, one thing I do consider is is maybe not necessarily going back into emergency, but I'm always interested in how I can kind of combine the two branches of my life, like sexual yeah. health. Um, I have just in the past year, I've been volunteering at a, a sexual health clinic in my city. Um, they're fantastic people. Um, so once a week I go in and I just do like, it's not in a clinical role because mm-hmm. I have a license there, I'm a volunteer, but just um, to be there and help them because they're such a good like do a lot of like free services for new Canadians and a lot of um sexual health teaching and uh so I'm just kind of get staying involved in that space and you know the wheels are turning maybe there's something yeah something no that now. totally makes sense I mean yeah people definitely need their sexual health taken care of especially people who work in the industry yeah there's a lot of conversation around that so I can totally see that so how has performing with your husband like affected your marriage like would you say that you guys have a stronger bond now yeah, we definitely have a stronger bond. Uh, it, it's kind of it goes back to what I was saying before about the communication, mm-hmm. um, the change in the communication. We're just a lot more open with each other and how we're feeling, and we we really work well together as a team. So, like, we have this relationship, but we're also like a business now because we run, you know, the, the independent content that we do and the OnlyFans and all that stuff together. Um, yeah, it's really brought us closer because we have like not only a hobby, but like a business and a sex life and it's mm-hmm. all yeah, it's fun. It's good. All right. So tell me about your first studio scene. So someone from Vixen reached out to yes. you and what was the first scene you got booked down? So they, they brought me in for their Milfie channel, mm-hmm. um, which I had to, I didn't know anything. Like I said, every new step is a learning experience for me because I'm coming from a place where I like, I knew nothing about porn. I knew nothing about any branches of the adult industry until we like jumped into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so now this this professional scene was a whole other thing. And I was like, I don't know anything about the, I didn't realize that Vixen was like huge. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Um, and um, anyway, so they were like, this is our, our new channel. It's called Milfie. They gave me like a free trial membership so I could watch some of it. And I watched it and I was like, oh, like holy shit. This is fantastic. That's not what you thought porn was. Yeah. 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 The episodes that I watched of Milfie, I'm like, these are clever. Like these women are are like strong. They're funny. They're they're like interesting. And they're just like owning that sex. Like it was so it was really cool to watch. Um, so I said, yeah, I want to be part of it. Um, they, they also, they made this, the first scene that I did, um, a hot wife scene so that I really appreciated that because mm-hmm. it was something that I was comfortable with. I knew about, I wasn't just jumping into like a, you know, girl on girl orgy or something that like mm-hmm. wasn't my thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, they, they made a scene that was very much like what my husband and I do. Like there was yeah. like a husband character who was like watching me with my scene partner and like I had to. I, I kept giggling because I was like, <laughs> you know, this is, this is like the pretend version of my actual life. Yeah, it's like <laughs> so meta. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was it was awesome. So, yeah, that was the end of 2023. Um, and I was hooked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who did you perform with? Like who's my my scene partner? Scene partner yeah. um, Dan Damage. Okay. Yeah. And I he know. was he was great. Um, yeah. Everybody was I was just it was I was almost just like like a. I just felt like a, I don't know, kid in a candy store. I was just looking around, like t- absorbing everything that was happening a- 
around me because like even just like the crew working together so seamlessly, the director was um, Caden Cross and like she was so cool and so passionate about the project. Um, and I was just watching everybody and I'm like, oh yeah, I have to have sex. But like I was just, you know, like a, like a learning experience, just mm-hmm. watching, you know, something that I was so unfamiliar with, but just really excited about. Isn't it funny too, how like most of the day is not spent on shooting the sex yes. to run everything else. <laughs> yeah. Did that surprise you too? Yes. And then I had to act and I'm, I'm also I, like, I'm not an actor and I'm not a model. Yeah. So like, I don't know how to pose and I don't know how to act, but it, I did those things. Yeah. And, like, they liked me. So I guess it went okay. Um, I was like, I can have sex, but I had to learn how to do these other things. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was really fun. And everybody was really good about it. And everyone in the room knew that it was my first time doing anything like that. So they were all just like focused on making sure I was comfortable. And I just, yeah, I really appreciated it, which is why I I came back. (laughs) And then you ended up getting a contract. Is that right? Yeah. In in May uh, this year. How many scenes had you shot with them before that happened? I had done three scenes with them. (laughs) That was it. And... They had invited me to come back for this this feature, this American MILF feature mm-hmm. um, for Milfie. And so they call, called me and were like, well, since you're coming for this feature, do you want to do a contract? And we'll count these towards your scenes for the contract. Um, and I said yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not really – like I, mean, I was really excited about working with Vixen, but I'm also not – I'm, I'm like my main thing is my my amateur work and my you know, my home business. And yeah. it's like we just like keep to ourselves and do our own thing. Um, I'm not looking to you know grind and work with a bunch of companies and like do a bunch of of professional scenes. So the idea that I'd only work with this one company and I really like them anyway, they'd bring me in and do a few, and then for most of the time I'm just back home in mm-hmm. Toronto doing my thing. Like this sounds like a very like chill like I. I like there wasn't a whole lot of expectation to like be, you know, it's a good traveling way to be and stuff all the time. Introduced to the industry, and not a lot of people get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, so I, I said, yeah, it was. So Vixen's the only studio that you've worked for. I did do a browser scene. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> which was was a lot of fun. Um, probably very different in terms of like just the script and everything. Oh yeah, so yeah. different. Like. Like Brazzers is hilarious. Yeah, I like they, everybody was really nice. I loved working with them. The scene turned out really well. Um, but when when Vixen offered me the contract, I was like, when I think of myself as a consumer of of porn, like I, like I loved the Brazzers and I had nothing bad to say about them at all. But I'm more just my own taste. I like the like the fantasy and the beautiful and um, you know that sort of more sensual. Mm-hmm. It's a different porn, vibe, yeah. um, as opposed to like the surprise <laughs> browser's yeah. face. Like, <laughs> I'm really glad that I did it, so yeah. that I could that, that that's out there, and I think it looked really good. So it kind of like checked that off the the list that I never knew I had. Yeah. Um, but like as a as a, like as a consumer of porn, I'm drawn more to the vixen style. So I, yeah, that makes sense. Will you be going to ABN this year? Do you think? Um. Yes, I will. Is that going to be your first time? I went to the last ABN. I had a nomination for one of their independent creator awards. Oh, but, okay. Um, yeah, so I went for that. But how'd you feel about it? Um, it was okay. It was the first. That was the first time I'd ever been to the whole ABN convention and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little bit overwhelming. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people. And I like. I am. Even though I am in this industry, I am more of an introvert type of person. Mm-hmm. So a big room with like crowds. And I could never do like the signing and the. And that sort of thing. Um, I'm like I might down the road, but that wasn't my wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. So I went. The awards show was really cool. Um, you know, that was it was it was more just like a people watching and absorbing mm-hmm. thing for me. So this year, I think it'll be better because I know more people. I'm more familiar with more people. Yeah. And um, yeah, it is. It's a lot. It's very. It's very overwhelming at first. Mm-hmm. I've managed to avoid the show for many years but i've been going for the last few years and (laughs) i will i will be there this year for sure i don't know exactly where somewhere my last uh question for you is what advice would you have for men or women who are interested in introducing the hot wife kink into their marriage but don't know how to approach it with their partner you just have to talk about it um i get i get this question a lot from people on only fans and other platforms that ask me and sometimes the wording of it, I, I'm not uh, 
Okay. So for, for example, I get a lot of guys saying, how can I convince my wife to do what you do? Mm-hmm. And already I don't like you. No, already I'm like, <laughs> That's not like you already have the wrong approach because you're going at it like I want to convince my wife to do something that maybe she's not interested in. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't you can't convince your wife to do it. You can have a conversation and say, this is what I think is really um, sexy or this is a fantasy that I have. What do you think about that fantasy or what are your fantasies? I think open a general conversation to fantasies and and things that you might want to explore in your sex life. I don't think it should be a hey, let's if if it's something that's far from what you've already done, I don't think it's I don't think it's ever healthy to just be like, let's do this like right away because you haven't kind of like led up to that with, mm-hmm. with anything else. So I don't think <laughs> I don't think you should ever look at it like I'm trying to convince my partner to do something. Um, cause I don't think that's a healthy view. I think just start conversation and just open it up. Mm-hmm. Like for my partner and I, I mean, it was years before we actually did anything, you know, but it sounds like you guys had like a good communication dynamic before that. And I think that's probably what's missing in a lot of couples. Well, that's it. We, we have always talked about, you know, things that turned us on. Like our sex life was always, even before we involved other people, our sex life was interesting for mm-hmm. both of us. And we would, you know, try kinky things and try fun things. And and we were just open about what felt good, what didn't feel good. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've had those kind of questions too. And then when I dig a little deeper, it becomes like, yeah, I have a sexless marriage. My wife, like, hate sex and she doesn't want to have sex with me. And I'm like, I don't know how you're going to make the leap from that to like threesomes or anal or whatever they're (laughs) asking about. I'm like, if you're not having sex at all, like that right there is an issue. And I don't even know how you work on that. Cause what is that wrapped around? Like, does she not trust you? Does she have a lot of like shame around her sexuality? Is she overworked? Is she overburdened? Is she um, you know, does she self-conscious about her body? Like there's so much there. There's so many variables and every relationship is completely different. Yeah. And what works for one is not going to work for another. So I can't really give, you know, yeah. hard, fast advice on how to, you know, transform a relationship to to something else beyond just talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk to your partner. Imagine, <laughs> your partner. imagine that. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Serenity. I do have some questions for you from my Patreon members, which we'll do in a separate segment, if that's okay. Okay. Um, And then can you let everybody know where they can find you online and see all your content? Yes, absolutely. Um, So uh, Instagram, I'm serenitycox.official. Twitter, I'm serenitycox.to. And then I have my OnlyFans, which is just serenitycox. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's also Pornhub. Yeah. Just my name. (laughs) <laughs> and then you guys can obviously find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Holly Randall. Go to hollylinks.com for access to all of my platforms. Uh, and of course, if you want to watch these episodes streamed live and get access to bonus Q&As like we're about to do now, um, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're listening to this on any podcast platform, leave a comment, leave a rating, would really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you on the next one. 